Psychic Radio, WYCD, HD3 Detroit, KJAQ, HD3 Seattle, WBMX, HD3 Boston, and on AOL Radio, and Yahoo Launchcast. Okay, we must be on here, I guess. I'm going to start asking our questions. We had our guest, and we kind of uh, got him on hold here. Anyway, welcome to Behind the Paranormal. Is there any connection between religion and the paranormal? Why do many religions teach the reality of an afterlife, but forbid any involvement with ghosts and mediums? Is there any room in modern religions for the concept of the multiverse? Hey, and welcome to the 102nd broadcast of Behind the Paranormal with Paul Benino. I'm Ben, and you just heard my co-host and partner in the paranormal, my dad. Our call-in numbers here on CBS Psychic Radio and NewSkyRadio.com tonight are 866... Well, the toll-free number, I'm afraid, isn't working tonight again, so uh, we'll just have to give him the other one. Okay, so 248-545-SOUL, 248-545-7685. Or if you're listening on a computer, you can use the nifty instant feedback feature to the right of the NewSkyRadio.com homepage as you listen today live. We start today. We're going to start with something new. This is uh, this will be the first in an occasional series of Sunday shows. We will look at different religions or look at how li- different religions look at the paranormal. <clears throat> Over the course of the series, we'll talk to clergy from every faith you can think of, including Muslims, pagans, to get their view of the paranormal. At the end, we plan to do a three- to two-hour discussion between our listeners and a panel of these guests. Yeah, we, uh, we're on. Go ahead. Oh, we are? Okay. I hope uh, so. Well, for one thing, it says, call ended. No. All right. Call group. Call failed. All right. Oh, dear. We got some technical problems here. Uh, uh, Father Anthony, are you on with us? Okay. We, um, we got some issues. All right. Call the group. Okay. Okay. Well, we're on there. And uh, wait a minute. Let, let me just. Uh, okay, folks, if you're listening, you're, this is how we uh, kind of get uh, a little bit confused here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, dear. well, it says you're on over there, but we just can't get Father Anthony. Okay, well, we will. We, um, do, but, we, we will. Yeah. We will get him on here at some point. Um, again, well, I, well, hopefully you heard Ben's intro there. Uh, we are going to start with a priest of the Eastern Orthodox faith, uh, which is historically speaking the oldest branch of Christianity. Now, Father Douglas Anthony Perkins is the rector of Saint Michael Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. He has a great interest in the paranormal. Uh, he also it has quite an unusual resume. Before he became a priest, he retired from the U.S. Army Reserve as a chief warrant officer, in which rank he served as an intelligence analyst. As a civilian, he continued intelligence analysis for the Army and served as an adjunct professor both at the United States Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island, and after his ordination at St. Sophia Orthodox Seminary in South Bonnbrook, New Jersey. He also taught at Ohio State University. He is an expert in analytical methods and software, with skills in economics, political science, and many other fields. Father Anthony is an expert in both Christian and Muslim theologies. He is a well-known speaker on national security and has published many commentaries, essays, and assessments on these subjects. He speaks fluent Russian, is currently writing a dissertation on the interplay of politics, religion, and security in Russia and Pakistan. Uh, There's much more. Uh, Father Anthony's websites are www. Uh, O-R-T-H-O, orthoanalytica, O-R-T-H-O-A-N-A-L-Y-T-I-K-A dot org, and uh, HTTP, www dot St. Michael, U-O-C dot org, S-T-M-I-C-H-A-E-L, U-O-C dot org. Uh, call in number zero. Father Anthony, are you with us? No, 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 He's not. No, okay. No, no, no. Um, yeah, I, okay. Let me, <laughs> why don't, um, hmm. Okay, well, let us try one more time here, studio. Uh, let's see if we can't get him going here. Yeah, it's okay. There we go. 
Okay, folks, just uh, bear with us for a second here. Our call in numbers again tonight. Uh, I'm afraid our toll free number is not working, uh, but we have 248 545 Soul. That's 248 7685. I have 24, I'm sorry, 248 545 7685. Or if you're listening on a computer, use that instant feedback feature to get right to us on our screen. Uh, do we have Father Anthony yet? Yes, you do. Oh, very good. Do we have the studio on? Yes. yes okay, we, we do. Sorry about all the confusion. Life of the 21st century. Who needs it? <laughs> okay. All right, Father Anthony, welcome to Behind the Paranormal. Oh, thanks, Ben. Hey, Paul. It's How great to be fun? here with you all. Great. Very well. Already, uh, yeah, we did our intros and everything else. So, um, Ben, take it away. All right. Uh, how did someone with your background get interested in the paranormal? Well, you know what? I've, I've always been interested in the paranormal. I mean, I, when I was growing up, I uh, grew up with a really strong sense of wonder and, and awe about the world and how it worked. And, you know, I had a really loving family. Uh, I read lots of books, especially fantasy and science fiction. And that was a, I grew up in the 70s when this stuff was all over the TV and things. And, you know, we'd lay out on the, on the lawn and watch for UFOs and, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and also, you know, something else that, that nourished that sense of wonder um, and joy was I had a really good church. And um, so I've always been interested. I'm, I'm constantly amazed by the, the bizarre, beautiful, and sometimes scary things that, that we encounter in our daily lives. Um, but, but from the outset, I have to admit that I'm not sure I understand the term paranormal. And I think y'all have talked about this before. I mean, there, there's so much more to the world that, that meets the eye. But that doesn't make it paranormal or supernatural. It's just part of the world um, that was made in a way that allows us to continuously learn new things. Well, uh, well put. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Ben. But but it was oh. it was it was this sense of awe and wonder, by the way, that that led me to really embrace kind of tr- traditional Christian Christianity and to study for the priesthood. Um, and when I was growing up. I assumed that everybody wanted to pursue a religious vocation as much as I did. I was really naive. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the neat thing is that, um, that not only do I, as a Christian, not only do I have this sense of awe and, and wonder, but as a priest, I get to help other people experience the same thing. I'm kind of like a, a full-time paranormal investigator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what's your position on the paranormal since you've been a fan of our show and you've read my dad's books and... So why don't you exfoliate on that point? Okay, thanks. Um, well, a little bit of background. I mean, the basic idea, uh, my understanding of the world, is that, that we were all made to be one with one another and with the perfect, perfection that's God. And this is what um, I think that, that, Paul, you're referring to in, in some of your books as the unity. And for me, Orthodox Christianity offers a clear method for, for growing into this unity. Um, and because the center of the unity is pure and perfect, it's all goodness, then our journey into that center is eternal, and it leads to constant growth and new experiences of beauty. Um, So my view of the paranormal is seen in terms of this journey and all the resulting revelations that come. Now, on the other hand, it's it's also made up of all the many things that try to distract us from this journey. Um, But if we're living correctly, uh, then the border between our own perception and perfection is continually growing and evolving. So in, in orthodoxy, in orthodox teaching, we, we call this mystery. And it's a mystery not in the sense of something hidden, but of something unseen that is continually working its way into to resolution for us. Um, but most of this looks probably pretty mundane from the outside. It, it doesn't look paranormal. And it's, it's never going to get me my own TV show. Um, <laughs> But on the other hand, how can anything that, that is touched by the grace of, of an omnipotent, omniscient, and all-loving God be normal? Uh, so my interaction with the paranormal includes things like spiritual counseling and, and spiritual jiu-jitsu uh, to, to prayerfully reinvigorating my connection with people that I love, specific saints and angels and the departed through prayer, uh, to simple adoration and worship of God. Um, it also includes some of the most incredible supernatural experiences that anyone could ever imagine. Um, to give you an example, I mean, I'm a priest. So just this morning, uh, I served at the altar right across the street here, uh, surrounded by a host of angels, angel, archangels, cherubim, and seraphim. And then the Holy Spirit moved through me 
to mysteriously change the bread and wine we had offered on the altar into the body and blood of the God-man Jesus. And then I was not only able to participate in this, but I was able to share it with others for our mutual sanctification. I mean, this is this is huge. I mean, yeah, if, yeah. if it's real, it's huge, all right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and of course, I, I believe and know it to be real. Um, to get more specific, uh, as, as y'all have already said, I'm a, I'm a fan of your work, um, so that I, I know that your explanations work within the worldview of the multiverse. And I think that this worldview has a lot of explanatory power. I mean, even if it turns out to be wrong, and I've got my air quotes going, in some kind of scientific sense, it, it would remain a wonderful metaphor for helping us understand a lot of important things. Um, just like evolution becomes a wonderful metaphor for our communal sanctification in the work of Father Pierre Telhard, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but but even even if it is accurate, and, and here I'll, 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 this is kind of a question, uh, I don't think that it necessarily explains everything that gets called paranormal any more than I think that, that secular 20th century psychology did. Uh, for instance, it may be the case that many things that get called ghosts or demons or whatever are really just um, some kind of, I don't know, trans-dimensional activity of what are otherwise mundane people and things just somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, but that doesn't negate the existence of, uh, of beings made entirely of light and energy, whether good or bad, any more than the fact that, that some spiritual experiences can be artificially induced by things like, like uh, Dr. Persinger's God Helmet, I love that <laughs> show, by the way, or, or chemical imbalances or whatever, Sure, uh, means that, that some spiritual experiences aren't the result of real supernatural encounters. Mm -hmm. uh, that was kind of a long answer to a short question. I, I, I hope it makes sense. No, it does. I mean, I, 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 it's very well put. I don't think I certainly couldn't have written it better myself. Uh, we got a, we've got a break coming up, but we've got a little bit of time here. Go ahead, Ben. Oh, uh, <clears throat> man. All right. Uh, do, does that agree with the uh, church's official position on the paranormal? Well, or, there, or, or is there an official is, position? Yeah, there? oh. There's no official church teaching on the multiverse. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's in there, though. But it is, of course. Um, and, and I would never intentionally teach anything that wasn't orthodox, because I believe that orthodoxy provides the safest and, safest and healthiest way to achieve perfection. Um, so everything that I've said, yeah, this is an orthodox view. Um, all of these things that we're talking about are they're intimately embedded within our, our prayers, our services, our scripture, all the things that, that we refer to as tradition. Um, but not everyone is willing to engage in this conversation. Um, some people prefer to simply preserve knowledge in the form that it was passed on to them. And, and Paul, I think you've run into some of these people. Oh, yeah. Uh, but others some of are... Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but others are, are more like evangelical explorers, right? Sure. And, and we love discovering how God is being revealed in new places and then to work with, with the people there to perfect this revelation in them and in us. Um, mm -hmm. so, it, so my view is, is orthodox. I mean, I, I typically use the language of resonance, harmony, and unity, um, whereas other people might use the language of spiritual warfare. Sure. Um, you you use the language of the multiverse. Mm -hmm. we, we are all generally talking about the same thing. Now, I do tend to be more charitable than some or the some at least other uh, Orthodox theologians. I mean, there's this this book that came out by um, Seraphim Rose. Uh, he was a, a monk uh, called Orthodoxy and the Religion of the Future. And yeah, I've uh, read it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. And and there are Orthodox fundamentalists like like him who seem to think that everything that does not have the orthodox imprimatur is demonic. And this goes way too far. And to flip the same coin over, not everything that even pious orthodox Christians believe is true. I mean, uh, there's the danger of fundamentalism, of course, but there's also the, the, the dangers of, of relying on superstition and bad ad hoc theology. So, yeah, I mean, there is an orthodox teaching on the paranormal. It's, it's, it's part of everything that we do and, and learn and all the services that we, that we pray. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, our break is uh, kind of waiting for us here, but I just wanted to mention a uh, little bit of, um, uh, okay, we, I guess we, we do have to wrap. Uh, we'll be right back on Behind the Paranormal with Father Anthony Perkins, Orthodox Priest and Orthodoxy and the Paranormal. Be right back. Psychic Radio. 
mix with Dave and Tommy Jones on Psychic Radio. This is Dave. And this is Tom. And if you want to hear everything about paranormal, ghost, spirits, UFO, you've got to tune into your radio show. Don't guess. Tune in and you'll find out all about it. That's every Sunday, 8 until 10 p.m. Eastern on Parax Radio on Psychic Radio, powered by CBS. Psychic Radio. Psychiconair.com. We know you're listening. Look for Psychic Radio on your AOL radio player. Psychic Radio. We know you're listening. Back to Behind the Paranormal. With Paul and Ben Eno. Call now. Our new number, 248-545-7685. Psychiconair.com. Believe. Okay, welcome back. And hey, believe it or not, we got our 800 number back. So we want to call toll-free from anywhere in the USA. It's 866-894-3141 or the regular number 248-545-7685 545-SOUL Okay, we're back on Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno with Father Anthony Perkins and it's the first in our occasional series on religion and the paranormal uh, talking about a lot of things I don't think a lot of people talk about and Father Anthony has explained that position and I, I, I want to kind of turn around and ask him a question here too now, Eastern Orthodoxy, by the way, is you often hear Russian Orthodox, Greek Orthodox, or, or Eastern Orthodox. That's what we're talking about. It is historically uh, the most ancient branch of the Christian church. I mean, if you look at the five ancient churches founded by apostles, you've got Alexandria, Jerusalem, Antioch, Constantinople, and Rome. And uh, people say, well, I thought the Roman Catholic Church was the oldest church. Well, actually, Rome is the only one that's by itself. So... <laughs> Uh, you can argue that you know, who left who, that's not the, the point of this show. But anyway, that's, that's, it is certainly, I think, the most historically ancient branch. Anyway, 
Father Anthony, I will be completely candid here, okay? And I don't even go into this in the autobiographical chapter of Turning Home, my last book, because I thought it would cloud the issue. Now, mm-hmm. when, I, when I tell everybody I studied for the priesthood, people assume it was the Roman Catholic priesthood, and it was until 1975 when I joined the Eastern Orthodox Church because I thought its spirit was more faithful to Christian origins and set out to finish my final years of study for the priesthood at St. Vladimir Seminary in New York. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it was the Orthodox, not the Roman Catholics, who threw me out two years later (laughs) because of my paranormal studies. Uh But today, both Roman Catholics and Orthodox, even a few scholars and clergy like yourself, read my books and are very interested in, in what I have to say. Uh, so it's kind of like I want to say, like, thanks a lot. I mean, well, what's changed in the last 30-odd years? Or has anything changed? Or did I just get on the wrong side of the rector that day or something? Yeah, that's hard to tell. It seems to me like they maybe they had the, the filter uh, a little too tight there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you're, you're doing – you got a powerful ministry going on as it is. Um, so it's hard to tell what the plan there. I, I don't know. I don't know. Well, what's at, at the time, I don't know. The movie The Exorcist had come out several years before. People uh, were really hog wild. Yeah. Over this stuff, but of course they are today. But uh, I don't know. I just it, it's sort of a question in my mind. Yeah, it's, it's an extreme irony. It's disappointing. Irony. It's disappointing when you when you run into um, to people who aren't who aren't willing to answer the hard questions. You know, well, like, maybe I was uh, meant to do something else, like be here on CBS Psychic Radio. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, anyway, but no, I, I I see what you mean. It is it is hard to say. But I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, it's it's a good, it's a very good question because I mean you will you will still run into this, you know, where where people just it's not something they want to talk about. And I told you, I mean, this is one of the this is all part of me my call to the priesthood to study for the priesthood is that I'm interested in these big questions. I'm interested in the stuff that that we don't really understand. Exactly. And and like like you, I mean, I I found an Eastern Orthodoxy an approach that, that provided some very serious analysis and study of, of, the, of these questions. Mm-hmm. Um, now, not everybody sees it that way. Like I was saying, some people, they see their role as to, to perfectly preserve everything handed down to them in the words that it was handed down to them in. And, you know, this was, um, if you look at the, I'm, I'm guessing here, but I, I have studied my history pretty, pretty seriously. And um, if you look at the... The Orthodox Church, especially the Russian branch of it here in America, which is what St. Vlad's came out of, um, you know, they they were still living in a reaction to things like um, Blavatsky and and the Odyssey and stuff. So they had even overreacted, in my opinion, to to the research that was done um, by some some good Russian theologians on things like Sophia, Holy Wisdom. Oh yeah. Uh, so you know, it's hard to tell the. You still do have that within, within Orthodoxy, but you know who knows? Things times do change. You know, there's a patriarch in Moscow who now says that it's okay for women to wear pants to church. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, that's pretty. Oh, yeah, and, starts... and it's funny because he has to say these things because you do get these these bizarre, ad hoc theologizing done. Um, you know, this kind of pious uh, piety, local piety. Uh, where they think that the the women who are wearing pants are are trying to be men or something. And Mm -hmm. so he had to come out. He actually had to come out and say, no, they bought those pants in a women's section of the store. You know, leave them alone. Let them come to church. Let them worship. Stop. Let me know when he starts talking about aliens like the Vatican has. But Oh, right. Yeah. Well, Ben's uh, Ben's got our next question, Father. Yeah. um, Outside of my dad's work and I guess you could say mine because we are partners in crime, Mm-hmm. Uh, what's the orthodox opinion of like the general paranormal scene today, like ghost hunters, people going to psychics and mediums and all that junk? Well, you know, it's, I, I can speak just as, as myself. You know, I've been a priest for two and a half years, so I can't really speak for orthodox opinion. But I'll tell you that I think it's, it's dangerous. Um, I mean, we, we have to be, in this world, we have to be more serious about how we treat one another and we also have to be more serious about how we treat the supernatural. And it's my opinion that, that orthodoxy provides a healthy way to do this. Um, now, the, the center of orthodox Christianity, the place where it's revealed, preserved, the place where it's passed down in its purest form, is not, it's not the individual with their Bible or the religious leader in a hierarchy somewhere. <laughs> um, although I have my Bible right here and my, my patriarch is in Constantinople. Um, but yeah. it's found... In, in the, the ascetic experience of monastics, right? 
um, and, and through millennia of, of their single-minded devotion, um, they have been led to develop a set of disciplines that allow us to interact with, with both the mundane and the supernatural world safely. Um, and this is the way of life that's taught or should be taught in, in all of our parishes. And it's useful for everyone. You know, and it includes disciplines, serious disciplines like fasting. You know, Orthodox are basically vegan for half the year. It includes other disciplines like prayer, um, sacrificial giving, simple living, and humility. And these are just some of the spiritual exercises that enable you to thrive no matter what kind of challenges that that people or principalities send at you. And, and, you know, they kind of allow you to remain stable, to keep your feet planted no matter what kind of storms come at you. Um, people who go out in search of danger, whether it's, it's physical or spiritual, they need to prepare first. I mean, you, I, was, I was a soldier for 20 years. You don't go into battle without learning some basic skills beforehand. In spiritual warfare, if you don't have control over your passions, then your enemies, no matter what their form, will be able to manipulate you and ruin your life. I mean, if, if you can't keep your cool in traffic or while settling a difficult dispute with family members, then you have no business leaving the trenches in search of danger. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, or the Orthodox Christians, we take this stuff seriously because we believe it's real. And um, the, the Desert Fathers especially, they're the monastics who are really good at, at sharing this wisdom in a, in a simple and readable form. So it's, that, that's it's my, so I mean, it's, it scares me. Honestly. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's true. Uh, you know, we, we say virtually this, you know, very similar things on the show here when we have people, and our, our listeners are intelligent, they question, you know, how do you know a psychic is telling the truth? How do they know they're talking to what they say? Because there are so many dangers out there, and when you just let it go, uh, there are good reasons why a lot of the a lot of religious groups, especially churches, will say, "Hey, think twice," or be warned. You know, there's good reason for that. We have enemies out there, and we talk about them all the time. We call them parasites. Other people call them demons. Whatever you call them, they're not our friends, and th they get to you in all sorts of different ways. Uh, one a listener asked a very good question one time: Why is it that these psychics, most of them anyway, who practice even full time, seem to have lives of one disaster after another their marriages fall apart the financial catastrophe the, the, all these things happen if, you know if, the, if they're so much in touch with uh, the great beyond or whatever you want to call it you know and so as i say to me every i guess it's like about a john you know, every every uh, you know don't don't believe every spirit don't trust every spirit every entity to me is guilty until proven innocent frankly uh, yeah and and that that's what that's what we teach too i mean and the thing is, it's not just that there are, you know, bad people and bad entities or whatever that are trying to, to hurt us, seriously. Um, but there are also weaknesses within ourselves that they, they, they can exploit. Buttons and, to push. Right, buttons to push, exactly. And these disciplines are what you do so that, so that you, you're not affected. You're not continually reacting to things that other people and things do. People you you want, are being more yourself. That's right. People want the spiritual fulfillment without the work that goes with it. It's a very Western, modern attitude. Yeah. You know, immediate satisfaction, Madison Avenue. You know, if you have to work for it, then why do I have to work for You know, and that's, that's a problem. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we got another break coming up here, but uh, uh, Ben did have another question. Maybe we can chew on it over the break. Go ahead, Ben. Oh, all right. Um, <clears throat> have you yourself ever experienced, like, a paranormal experience? <laughs> You know, something that would generally be called a paranormal experience. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. instead of like an ordinary experience. Uh, right. The way that, um, well, okay, you know oh, well, I'm afraid we got our break. We'll be right okay. back, but think about that, Father. Well, maybe and, something uh, fun will happen during the break to me, and I'll let you know. <laughs> all kinds of fun things happen during the break. All right, well, we'll uh, be right back here in Behind the Paranormal with Father Anthony and our discussion on religion and the paranormal. Stay with us. Psychic Radio. 24 hours a day. Reach out from beyond to your ears. On the web now. Log on to psychiconair.com. Your spiritual well-being is our concern. This is Psychic Radio. Powered online by AOL at psychiconair.com. We know you're listening.
Psychic Radio. We know you're listening. Back to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Our new number, 248-545-7685. Psychiconair.com. Believe. Hi, folks. Welcome back. And we do also have our toll-free number, 866-8948. I'm sorry, 866-894-3141. Toll-free from the USA. And 248-545-SOUL-7685 from anywhere. And we're back with Father Anthony Perkins of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. And we're talking about the approach to the paranormal taken by uh, the Orthodox Christians. And it's the first of a series on how religion approaches the paranormal. So Ben, I think, has another question. That I do. Um, How does your background as a professional analyst affect your approach to the paranormal? Well, uh, yeah, do you want me to describe any paranormal experiences? That oh, I've yeah, had? that's right. Well, oh, yeah, of course, yeah, that's we right. We started that yeah, question. Okay. Then... As long as they're not <laughs> classified. No, uh, no, I won't. I won't. I don't want to have to track you all down and shoot you. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I was an intel analyst for, for my, um, you know, I was an intel army guy for 20 years. Um, and I did spend a lot of time at Wright Pat. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but, but it wasn't on that program. <laughs> oh, and no alien bodies around but, there. You know, I, I hinted at this earlier. I mean, I was, you know, I think most of the kids my age did this, but we would lay down in the yard at night once it got dark just watching for UFOs, right? Mm-hmm. And I lived about two miles south of Hartsfield International Airport. <laughs> 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 so that made it kind of tough. You know, we didn't have the discernment to tell a 747 from a, anything else. Um, but we would, you know, we would wander the the fields and the forest looking for stuff, signs of Bigfoot and we even created our own local legend for our neighborhood, and then we kind of spread it among the the kids at school and stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we 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 did a tour on Halloween night to take people through where we thought this thing lived. It was a lot of fun, but no, in well, terms you were, of you were, uh, I wish I'd known you. <laughs> a lot of fun, but yeah, um, but I really do think that I live in a different world than most people. I mean. Where in this world, the way I see it, I mean, miracles are real, and the paranormal is is normal. Absolutely, I mean, that's the world we live in. That yeah. is the real world. So, so I, I, you know, we walk the same roads as everybody else, but but I do try to see everything in the light of Christ with with eyes of love. I know that probably sounds kind of silly, but well, I'm talking uh, about love all the time on this show. It doesn't sound silly right. coming from me. It's not going to come. Yeah, I mean, from, love yeah. and beauty. These are these are foundational concepts of this world. That's right. Uh, the world is think, what we make it. It's, right. it's, it's it's what you know. If we we cooperate with what it really is, then all kinds of great things can happen. Right. Yeah. Um. And and Orthodox they believe that you know we were made in the image of God. This implies a lot of things. One of them is that we have an effect on the world around us. We are creators. And if the world groans in in sin, which is how Saint Paul describes it at one point, it's because we you know we groan in pain and agony, and it affects the world around us. Um, I, re- I really love studying the, the si- social psychology of this kind of thing, and you, you learn how uh, the state of one person has an effect on the emotional state, not just of the people that they interact with, but there was, some, there was a, a finding reported in, through the New York Times three weeks ago that described how one person's loneliness would affect the people around them, of course, but people who were two people removed it would have an effect, a statistically significant effect. I read that. On their loan. I mean, that's yeah. amazing. It's incredible. So but this it's not is surprising. Of, no, it's not. But, but you know, in a, in a sense, I mean, this is, the, you might call this paranormal because we can't see it happening. Um, so a lot of my, my paranormal experiences range from some seemingly normal things like this. And, and for instance, like this conversation we're having. It's, it's more, it's a lot more than just a, a factual transaction. I mean, we're getting facts out. What is, what is the Orthodox Christian view of the paranormal and of the spiritual? You know? So you, know, you can write a transcription of this. But, but the more important things are going on kind of behind the scenes, you know, as your show is called, Behind the Paranormal. Right. And, and that is this, this beauty and this love. I mean, the, the, the image of God within me and within you, within Ben, within our listeners, resonating and bringing us closer together. So th- this is being kind of, unfortunately, it's ordinary experience, right? So it's, it's not, you know, you know um, St. Michael with wings, you know, putting his wings around me and, and things. Um, and, and other experiences that I have, you know, my priestly service here, it, it's what I call the St. Michael Hospital. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's also very real. I mean, you know, 
the sacraments, these mysteries are the ways that we encounter perfection and we grow in perfection. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they're, we don't call them paranormal in orthodoxy, but, but everyone is called to, to engage in what, what most writers call spiritual warfare. Yeah. Which means to guard yourself, not just from your, your passions. I mean, for, for years, people just talked about it as if, as if it were kind of a psychological or emotional discipline, right? Mm -hmm. And they, they spoke of demons as if, it, you know, you have the demon of alcoholism that you may be um, inclined towards or something. And yes, that's part of it, learning to overcome our own, you know, emotions and so on. Um, but the Orthodox Christian believes that, that, there is no separation between the spiritual world and the, the mundane world. It's all part of the same creation. Well, the big and, thing, too, I'm sorry, just, just uh, before I lose it here, uh, one of the things that I always notice in Orthodox theology that is just not present in spiritualism or in the approach that is, is so common with the paranormal in the, in the West, if you want to say, is the notion of the salvation of matter, yeah, you know, yeah. the salvation of the entire person rather than just the salvation of the soul, which really comes out of Zoroastrianism. That was never really a Christian doctrine. And, and uh, that, that's, that has meant everything to me in, in what I've seen in working with the paranormal. I said, ha ha, these are material worlds. You know, matter is, is not bad. It's not just, a, you know, you, you throw it off and all of a sudden you're in this, you know, fuzzy, warm and fuzzy, you know, world of the spirit world. I mean, all that nonsense, it just, it, it leaves me impatient. Yeah, let me see if I can, if I can hit this um, in, in three ways, okay? The, the first is this, this point that you were making about, um, you know, we are not just spirits trapped in a physical body. Exactly. Right. We are made. It, 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 a united person is is that soul, spirit, body all together, and all of it is sanctified together. Um, and so that that's one thing, you know. So it's when you teach, when you train your body, you are also training your spirit, and vice versa. Um, and so your body is saved along with you, you know, as part of your person. The other thing that you're saying is beautiful. I mean, the world is redeemed through love. You know, beauty is restored to its its natural place, um, and and this is this is a part of our our regular prayer. It's a part of our regular liturgy. Um, this notion and this reality, um, and then the last thing. This is this is a point that that you've brought up that I wanted to to talk about, and this gives me a perfect excuse to segue into it. <laughs> let me, sure, um, is is the salvation of the spiritual world, right? Because wow. you've been you, you know you you refer to them as parasites, and you're like. You know, these, these things, they respond to us, right? Mm -hmm. We know that, that the bad ones, they like to respond. They try to evoke emotion and passion in us and feed off of us, right? right? And get us stuck in this, this relationship of dependency. It's just awful, right? Mm -hmm. well, well, how can we affect this, right? Um, you know, can we, can we pray for these? Can we, can we share our love with them, not just share our love as a defense of our own souls, but also a way to help redeem them, right? And I, I love this. I'm very intrigued here. I mean, if, um, if I can just, just think out loud for a second. Sure. If these parasites are, uh, if they're just persons from other universes, right, from the multiverse, um, then sharing love in this way will be as effective on them as it is with people whose natural residence is here in this place and time, right? But if they are demonic, you know, if they are, if they are beings of light and energy, um, then it still may work. But That's I think what we're be, experimenting, exactly. Right, right. Yeah. And, and here I'm not just relying on my own opinions and your, your field work, right? I mean, you, you do this every day. Yeah. Um, but I'm also, I've, I've, I've done a little bit of research um, to find out what the, the opinion of the church is as expressed through, through the teachings of the saints. And, of course, you, you probably know that there is a view of the angelic nature, you know, whether it's good angels or bad angels, that, that this nature is fixed. So this understanding is that the spiritual beings have free will, but that their decisions rather regarding being good or bad is fixed because these spiritual beings made these decisions with full knowledge. Okay, that's one opinion. Right, and yes. an example of this is St. John of Damascus. And this is the one that I always heard, and I was like, where's the evidence? Right? I don't understand how this fits the rest of my Orthodox worldview. Okay? But then there's also the view that allows for the continual perfection of all things, the redemption of all things, and that even prays for the return of Satan to the holy unity. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Origen had this view, but he had some other whacked out views, so we can't completely rely. Well, he was considered a heretic. I mean, right. did people quote him. I mean, he and he had some he, tremendously a, beautiful visions. He, right, and and our our greatest saints learned from him. Sure. Okay. So you know, he he spoke. He was he was writing a lot of stuff about a, a field where people it wasn't well developed. So of course you're not going to say everything. Okay. Like, anyway. We have to wrap it up for another break, Father. I'm afraid, but we'll be okay. right back. We'll continue, and we'll do some emails as well that have come in for you. I'm behind the paranormal. Stay with us. Join Mystic Radio with Rob and Alexis Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern and 12 noon Pacific as metaphysical mother and TV personality Rob and Alexis helps countless people around the globe live fuller and more conscious lives. Robin serves you using her gifts as a medium, medical intuitive, past life reader, and more. Get your free on-air readings Wednesday at 3 Eastern and 12 noon Pacific right here on the sky. And check out Robin's Soul Spa at RobinAlexis.com. Psychic Radio. We know you're listening. Back to Behind the Paranormal with Paul and Ben Eno. Call now. Our new number, 248-545-7685. Psychiconair.com. Believe. And our toll-free number tonight, 866-894-3141, in addition to the number you just heard. And we're talking with Father Anthony Perkins, who is going to finish his thought that we left off with before the break uh, interrupted us. Go ahead, Father. Yeah, yeah, just real real quick. So there's the one view that sees them as fixed, but the other one views that, that everything is in a process of, um, of growth. You know, everything is possibly redeemed, and we pray for that. And the ones who had this view, um, not just Origen, but St. Gregory of Nyssa, he's, he's the, one of the wonderful um, spiritual teachers the myst, you know, of mysticism, Christian mysticism, and to a lesser extent, St. Ambrose. Now, the danger of this, though, is is that many demons are brilliant 
Oh, and they yes, see they into are. our they see into our minds and our emotions. Remember, they they communicate without sound waves. So they're reading our surface thoughts largely and emotions, and they'll try to identify and use our weaknesses in order to manipulate us and feed on us. So while you can and should love and pray for the sanctification of all creation to include demons, loving them does not mean that you ever trust them. That's uh, well and, and you know, the, the good practice for this kind of thing, I, I mentioned some of the disciplines, but the greatest discipline for practicing this is to, to try and do this with, with your neighbor, right? Love your neighbor, <laughs> right? And, and you'll notice how distracted you get from your single-minded purpose of loving your neighbor. You'll get distracted from it from, from whatever, hot-button issues, whatever. Very true. Um, and then just imagine if someone who understood you well and your weakness as well, we're trying to pull you off of this purpose, right? So, so um, we can learn to love well. This is what we're called to do, but it, but it takes practice. Okay. So that's, that's kind of all I wanted to say on that. Excellent. Okay, well, I wish it, we're going to have you back because uh, we, we're just beginning to scratch the surface here. But I want to go to some emails. And the first one here, uh, Lori Radcliffe, a uh, very faithful listener of ours in California, is, uh, has been waiting several weeks for an answer to this. And I wanted to wait until you could have some input on it. And uh, it's just, uh, I wanted to get your take on Deuteronomy 18, 10 to 12. It would seem to suggest that psychics and mediums are not a good thing. However, I can't help but wonder how accurate the English translations are. Uh, I am reading from the NKJ version. That's a new King James. Maybe King James is all right. How come they needed a new one? Uh, I wonder if, in fact, <laughs> if it is referring specifically to those who conjure up so-called dead spirits, opening the door to deceptive parasites, as opposed to those who have a greater spiritual awareness of what is in other dimensions. Could it be the church has mistakenly lumped these two groups together when perhaps more of a distinction should be made? What are your thoughts? Well, I think uh, Laurie is interested, I think, in my comments on translations, as, as we were talking about during the break, Father. And I have my trusty uh, Hebrew Bible here. And Deuteronomy essentially says, uh, in English, uh, it says, uh, there must not be found among you anyone that takes a son or his daughter to pass through fire, so much for walking on hot coals, I guess, or that uses divination, soothsayer, enchanter, witch, charm, or medium, wizard, or necromancer, for all these do uh, create an abomination to the Lord, okay? Now, the, the, the problem here is that uh, this was, we were just talking about, this, these were translated, the, 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 what I have here is from the... Hebrew, all right. But unless you're part of ethos and you translate stuff into the English Bibles, it's mostly done by Christians who are not part of the Jewish ethos, and whose Hebrew interpretations may not be exactly what they would be if you were Jewish. Okay, that means a lot, I think. Yeah. But the, generally, the word used here um, is keshaf. Uh, that essentially means one who whispers spells, and it, it, it literally is whispers, right? And um, it it is very much like the word keshep, which to me is suspiciously uh, Egyptian, and means the same thing. But it could also mean uh, poisoner, uh, herbalist, and it was used in the Septuagint of pharmakia, which for, obviously from our word pharmacist comes from. Yeah. And this so there are a number of different interpretations of what they're talking about here, and the word whispers indicates it could also be someone who is a gossip, you know. <laughs> and that, so, and and it it, it essentially says uh, you don't necessarily take out the sword and lop these people's you know tie them to a stake, you do you do not let them live among you. So it might mean banishment. I don't know, but uh, to answer um, the question here from Laurie, I think this isn't a relatively accurate translation, but I think interpretation is what is important here, and you have to look at the original words. Uh, uh, for example, medium is as uh, ba'alat ab in Hebrew, and ab is spirit, but not necessarily a spirit of the dead. It could also mean a, a, what we would call a parasite or some non-human thing. Uh, but I could go on and on here. We haven't got time to go through the whole thing word for word. But, but that, that's my take. I mean, I think you have to be very careful how uh, how you interpret it, but it is translated relatively accurately here. Uh, what and do you then, think, Father? Well, the, another good story where you can try and figure out what um, you know the Jewish attitude towards this kind of thing was is the the incident with the the witch of Endor, mm. right? Um, and 
you know, when it comes to translations and, and stuff, uh, there are a couple of people that I that I turn to on things like this. One of them is a Orthodox theologian. He's he's here at Holy Cross in Boston, and that's Father Eugene Pentiuk. And he does wonderful work on this. And then the other one is uh, Michael Heiser. And I, I learned about him on Coast to Coast uh, Radio, and he would be a wonderful guest. He's fantastic. And he did he did a whole he's he's an academic and he did work on on this thing about what the, the you know Jewish attitude is toward mediums and stuff like that. And I think that the general point though is that, that she's right. I mean the you're not supposed to cast out people who are sensitive, right? Right. It's it's there there are healthy ways to use your gift and then there are unhealthy ways to do it. And um, the idea is to make sure that you you develop the disciplines and things and the and the training uh, to do it well. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Well, that's uh, I think uh, probably a pretty good answer here. And uh, let's try and take one more. We only got two minutes. So let's try and take one real quick. Uh, here's from Brittany G. Uh, who I'm not sure what she doesn't say where she's from. Said, "Do you believe that Wiccans are actually worshiping the devil?" <laughs> Quick question. <laughs> no, no, I don't think they're worshiping the devil. Um, that you know, they're <laughs> they're, they're pagans. That's they're they're not worshiping you know Christ certainly by name. But uh, you know, if they are dedicating themselves to love, then then we pray that that their work is um, is is useful and, and helps them. Sure. I mean, I you know, we I, I believe I'm an Orthodox Christian, so I, I I believe that the the fullness, the best way to do these things is is as an Orthodox Christian. But, you know, the truth is is the truth, right? And, uh, and this includes foundational principles. Okay, I, I'm afraid we got to wrap it up, Father. Oh, sorry about out that. Of time. I'm awful sorry. We'll be right. We'll be um, back next week, folks. Uh, thank you, Father Anthony. Uh, I want to thank our producer. And we'll uh, see you next week when we have Rosemary Ellen Guiley with us, uh, the paranormal renaissance woman. See you then.